Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am here today with my September wrap up. I managed to read 17 books in September, which is just like mind blowing to me. I don't know how I did it. I don't think I'll ever be able to do that again, but these are the books that I read. I started the month off by finishing a book that I had just started at the end of August and wasn't really getting into, but I really wanted to because I'd had it on my TBR for a long time and there are quite a few books out of the series and that just sent me into this like absolute spiral of marathoning it all and that is Poison Princess by Cresley Cole. I followed it up by reading Endless Night, Dead of Winter, Day Zero, and Arcana Rising. For you who don't know, this is the Arcana Chronicles about this girl named Evie who has, she's, it starts off that she's talking to this guy telling the story of what happened before and after The Flash. The Flash is this end of the world type scenario that's set off and it kills a lot of people and other people it's mutated into these things called bag men that are like rotted corpse zombie sort of things. But I didn't really know what to expect. Like, I'd heard that it was sort of to do with um, tarot deck, if you know anything about tarot. I've been doing tarot cards my whole life. So it, you, it's like, essentially, like, I would kind of describe it almost as like a Hunger Games because there's the Major Arcana and then there's Minor Arcana, but they're not really mentioned yet in the series. But the Major Arcana are like, if he's the Empress and there's Death, and the tower and just all sorts of different ones. It's super hard to explain. It was really hard for me to get into for some reason because you sort of go way back to before when Evie had just come out of three months at a psych ward because she was having these hallucinations thinking that she could communicate with people and it turns out that it's actually real. So that's why it's sort of like a Hunger Games type thing because at the end of it there has to be one winner who will be immortal at the end of it and death is after her. He's won like the last two or three games and like so then he just lives his entire span until a new game starts in a couple of centuries and it's nuts and I just read all of them and now I'm like right now I have to wait for the next book because it ended of course it was a freaking cliffhanger after kind of saturating myself with this like paranormal sort of urban fantasy thing I decided that I wanted to grab some contemporaries so from my book haul that I posted before I will link it up there if you haven't seen it I read and marathoned the spinster club trilogy and that consisted of am I normal yet how hard can love be and what's a girl gotta do and the only way that I can really describe these is sort of like an Anna Lola Isla situation it's like Everyone's in the same universe and they are actually friends, they're close friends and you see them kind of way more than you do in Anna Lola and Isla. But it's like that different sort of personality traits and they've got different problems going on, rocking thoughts of feminism, they have the spinster club which they talk about women's issues and you know, they try to not talk so much about boys but of course there's love interests in every single one of them and it's really really cute. So in Am I Normal Yet we follow Evie who is sort of going through a transitional period in her life. Her best friend Jane is very much involved with a boy and just kind of not really spending any more time with Evie. And she runs into this girl called Lottie, who she was friends with in her earlier schooling. And Lottie is friends with a girl named Amber. And they just kind of like take Evie underneath their wing and they're just like, oh no, we'll be friends, we'll hang out. And they form the Spinster Club. So that's the first book. Um, and Evie's mental health issues are definitely very overarching in it. And it's like, really amazing and totally powerful. Just seeing that kind of raw and honest in a book and there was this really really great line. She goes on a date with a guy and she can kind of see in him something in herself like you can, she can see that he has obvious issues and that he kind of needs help and says something to the effect in her inner dialogue and it's just like I want to tell them that I'm not a terrible person that I need to look after myself before I can look after anyone else and I think that sort of for something that's aimed at younger girls who could possibly be going through the same thing that's like a really good light bulb moment. Next up is Amber's story that I definitely related to the most. Amber is going to America to spend six weeks with her mum who she hasn't seen in a few years who is a recovering alcoholic who married her counsellor like it's super super dodgy so from the get-go I'm just like well Amber's mum's a shady bitch guy that she's married's fucked up to Amber's maturity was amazing of course she meets a boy there she just thinks that he's just like so quintessentially American and she's just like very British and the humor is amazing and finally there is what's a girl gotta do and that is Lottie's story Lottie is probably the most 
outspoken of all of the girls. He is walking to school one day, well college because that's what they call it in England I think, um, well they do in the book. So she's walking to college one day and she is sexually harassed by these two guys, like she's just dressed completely normal, she's fine, like she's just you know walking down the street. I'm sure a lot of women have experienced this so you know girls are probably like nodding your heads like yeah I've just been wearing whatever and she freezes you know she thinks she's like and she gets really angry at herself she's like no like I should have called that out like I shouldn't have felt intimidated I shouldn't have felt worried even though it's a completely normal thing to feel so she decides to start this media project called the Vagilante which is a fucking A plus name Amber thought of it as well and she calls out every instance of sexism towards men as well because that's what feminism is it's just a quality with a scary name and um it becomes this thing and then online hatred starts to spew out like guys a guy from her past tries to slut shame her and like it's just it's really really powerful and good and there is like a little bit of romance in it but the overall thing is just about Lottie's project and getting into Cambridge to become the Prime Minister one day and it's just really really good I loved it I thought that they're all so amazing they're all five star books from me so I would definitely recommend those ones if they've been on your TBR and I want to check out more by Holly Bourne ASAP. The next three books that I read were just they were the end of me <laughs> like I can't I can't talk about them but I can. I read The Foxhole Court, The Raven King, or as I call it the OG Raven King, not Maggie Steve Arnold, and then The King's Men. So I first heard about these books on Tumblr. Someone had just reblogged like a little photo set and I was just like okay well this has piqued my interest hasn't it? And I went on YouTube like I do to look for reviews and I found one and <laughs> She's like, if I had to describe it in two words, it would be gay sports. Turned it off, did not need to hear any more. Decided gay sports is my new favourite genre. Want to read everything gay sports. It's so much more than gay sports, but there is gay sports. The character's name is Neil Jostin. And when we first open up in this book, it's... I need to warn you, it's a lot to kind of grasp in the first book. I'm pretty sure they're self-published so like there was no one really to reel it back in but for a self-published book these are so so good. It happens that Neil is playing this game called Exy and Exy is basically like a combination of lacrosse and I would say ice hockey without skates because it's played indoors um, on a certain little like Exy field and it, it's in like a perspex box it's got a huge following it's like college football level sort of following. Neil is on the run from something. He like says straight off the bat he's like I dye my hair, I wear coloured contacts, I am like I'm a shady bitch. Like he's living in some small town where he's sort of disappeared. He's just like I've had to do this, like I can't believe I'm playing Exy. I promised my mom when she was dying that I wouldn't. It's like whoa what's going on? And you don't know what's going on the entire first book. Like I need to warn you about that because there's so many characters but all of the characters are really important so straight away they're like oh and then Andrew tackled Neil and you're like who the fuck is Andrew but Andrew tackles Neil a lot so just get used to that. Neil is offered a scholarship to come and play Exy at college and he's like I can stay for a year because people are going to start to recognize me and there is actually a guy from his childhood named Kevin on this same Exy team. Kevin was on a way better team but for some weird reason he just stopped playing he became the assistant coach but he's making a comeback and he has this injury from a supposed skiing accident and he's had to stop playing Exy right-handed and now he plays left-handed so he's gonna come on and this team that he's coming on to are like misfits like it's basically a prerequisite that you're just like fucked up if you're on this team like there's an ex-drug addict there's um Andrew and what's his brother's name Aaron, Andrew and Aaron Minyard who are like five foot tall and just absolutely psychotic. A who's a born again Christian, you don't really know what happens with her until the last book and it's all very interwoven and really amazing and I just loved it so much. I gave the first book four stars because like I said you have no idea what the fuck's going on until the very end and even then you're like yes this is an amazing book, I don't know what was happening, I loved it so much, it's my favourite. Who was that again? And then the next two books were five star reads. Rash for these books, completely batshit, like they're insane. Yeah, I would definitely recommend reading them. <laughs> the next book that I read was Porn by Amy Carter. I had this as a free download on my iBook, so I just read it on my phone. The trilogy, it's a dystopian um, about a girl named Kitty, Kitty Doe. She's a second child and 
that's just not a thing in in this world you know it's a dystopian like everything always happens it's like the same shit all the time I have these different ranking systems and she was ranked pretty low i think that she was a three and a one's the worst it's, it's someone's like daughter who dies layla hart and kitty is masked so she's turned to look like layla and just to continue on with her stuff and then she finds out that layla's sort of like half leading a rebellion to, to get the people so kitty's in deep shit after all of that i was like i'm gonna read some romance and romance i did read i read fallen too far by abby glines this was another free ebook i think i gave this a two star i didn't like it i didn't think that it was that great it was a wild ride and i don't think that i'm gonna read any more of the books in the rosemary beach series this author i had never read anything by her alone but she is one half of Erin Watt and that is Elle Kennedy and I read her off-campus series and that consists of The Deal, The Mistake, Score and The Goal. Told from two points of view but they're mainly revolving around the guys who live in this house together. They're hockey players at Briar University <laughs> It sounds so dumb when I talk about it. The first book is Garrett and what is her name? Hannah. Garrett and Hannah. And Hannah is, she's a survivor of rape, which is like said on the first page. It's not a spoiler at all. And it's definitely not about that. Like she has really dealt with the horrible thing that happened to her. And she is kind of just like whatever about guys like she's like she's not scared of them she's worked through therapy it's really great and Garrett finds out that she has a high score on a test that everybody else failed and of course it's going to put his game in jeopardy and he hassles her into helping him learn and they just fall for each other because you know that's just what happens in new adult but you know the overall themes of it were great um the next book the mistake was definitely my favorite it was Logan and Grace's book. So Logan is Garrett's teammate. Grace is like a new character that we meet. Um, and <laughs> I liked it because whenever I'd hear Logan, I'd think of Logan Eccles from Veronica Mars. So I was like, okay, cool. This is like, this is Logan, even though his name's John Logan. He thinks that he's in love with Hannah from the first book, but he actually just wants a girlfriend. So he like hooks up with Grace, and then he gets rid of it because he's like, no, I'm actually into someone else, but wrong, bro. So that's just a cute one. There's hockey, there's stuff. Score is Dean, who is like a massive player. Like he's just hooked up with everyone, which is whatever. And then Hannah's best friend, Ali who has just come out of a massive relationship, they get drunk one night on tequila and like, you know, Dean's like, this girl's cool. Like, you know, he wants to hit it twice and she's like, Mur! so immediately that just makes Dean go on the chair. The one where the books start to intersect more, like before it was kind of like, bam, bam. And then this is where things happen and branch off because then the next book I can't say anything about, but it is a character named John Tucker. Everyone just calls him Tuck. And I'm like, I'm wondering if she knows about like John Tucker must die. I can't tell you the plot of this book because it's, of course it's like a big bombshell at the end, but things that are happening in the goal are running along with the score. Pencils. Yeah, that is my September wrap up. I'm really proud of myself. I think I did pretty freaking good. What do you think, guys? Have you read any of these books? and what was your favorite book that you read this month mine was definitely the fox like the whole foxhole court trilogy like that just gets my vote for absolutely best thing ever i think that's gonna be like a trilogy recommendation i'm reading all of these sporting books now i'm just like i should recommend sports books <laughs> thanks so much for watching guys i will see you in my next video Mwah! bye